I would like to also enter into the record a screenshot of a text message I received from the uh, esteemed professor from Vanderbilt, Michael Eric Dyson, after my CNN interview, begged me for photos. In this text, he says, after calling me a uh, racist on CNN, Shh, don't tell anybody, we look good together, and sent me a kissy emoji. That's the history and legacy of white disregard for the humanity of black people. Oh, so now you're calling me racist. I didn't say, that, I just said you weren't a racist. Yes, that is complete no, You don't yes. have to intend racism no, to no, accomplish No, 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 you are it. intending that Your I am racist. Your disrespect of Kamala and Harris that is, is part and parcel of a tradition of disrespect. It's offensive. Congresswoman, why can't you just, 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 you what the practice you are, is you are, you are. Why can't the prayer where I'm saying that? Disrespecting that. No, what's disgusting is your disgusting. disrespect of her. Professor. This gentleman said, you know what, I you didn't know, what's know her disgusting name. Disgusting to women to do is it. her disrespect of women. She doesn't know what a woman is. And if at 25 years ago, white I women became, don't have the ability to tell black women who, who paid the price of blood to make this country what it is to tell them they're not real women. 25 they years ago. for your baby. 25 years ago, I became the first woman to graduate from the Citadel, the military. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We got to talk about this pretty wild congressional hearing on Biden and Kamala Harris's border policies, okay? How their policies have essentially led to this country not having a border because we've been invaded by illegal immigrants from all over the world, okay? And there were some things that were exposed during this hearing that I want to talk about. And the first thing I want to talk about is something that honestly is not surprising to me at all, okay? Considering how I kind of understand the psychology of these race hustlers, right? Uh, the people that always are boohoo whining and crying racism because this is what they do in response to anybody that doesn't agree with the Democrat Party and they love uh, smearing people as racist because they don't agree with unfettered illegal immigration, which is what we have right now from the Biden administration. Uh, part of the reason why these people uh, always love to boohoo whine and cry racism is because they want that hug, right? They want that hug from the white man. And in this case, we have a black man that wants that hug from the white woman, okay? Which turns out to be the case after GOP Congresswoman Nancy Mace exposed race hustler Michael Eric Dyson, whom we talked about just maybe a month or two ago uh, when Kamala first got in the race. Uh, the race hustlers on CNN were boo hoo and crying about uh, people mispronouncing her name, even though they were mispronouncing Kamala Harris's name as well too, because nobody knows how to pronounce Kamala's name correctly except Indian people, because Kamala Harris has an Indian name because she is an Indian woman, right? Vivek Ramaswamy is like the only person that I've seen pronounce her name correctly on television because he's Indian. Yeah, those people that were boo hoo and crying racism towards Nancy Mace for uh, mispronouncing Kamala's name. One of them in particular, again, Michael Eric Dyson, he tried to slide into Nancy Mace's DMs after calling the woman a racist on national television. Take a look. Uh, chair recognizes the gentlelady from South Carolina, Ms. Mace. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my colleagues across the aisle said that those that, that cannot pronounce Kamala's name correctly are elementary aged children. I would like to enter into the record an article by Newsweek saying Bill Clinton pronounces Kamala Harris name wrong during DNC speech. Bill Clinton, along with Al Sharpton, rapper Lil Jon, let's not forget that Joe Biden can't say her name right, neither can Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, and this morning on Morning Joe, Joan Bias called her a camel. So I don't want to hear it. It's fake outrage. I would like to also enter into the record a screenshot of a text message I received from the uh, esteemed professor from Vanderbilt, Michael Eric Dyson, after my CNN interview, begged me for photos. In this text, he says, after calling me a uh, racist on CNN, Shh, don't tell anybody, we look good together, and sent me a kissy emoji. Without then objection. The guy, the guy says, order. I'm gorgeous, and all these photos. I don't think he's that bent out of shape on how anyone pronounces Kamala. Uh, and if we're going to have that standard, you got to hold it to both sides, not just one or, the, one or the other. Yeah, so here we have Michael Eric Dyson, who is one of these so called pro-black race hustling academics who's also a Baptist minister and a married man I believe okay I, I believe that he's still married I, I think that he's still in a relationship I could be wrong about that but it seems like he is according to my research uh and he's trying to slide in the DMs of a white GOP congresswoman that he called racist just moments before on CNN right on national television 
immediately after the interview, this man goes up to her and asks for photos. Said, we look good together. Slide in the DMs with the kissy face. Wow. Wow. But yet this guy, again, claims that he's supposed to be against white supremacy. He don't like white supremacy and all that. But yet, seems to me, you like white women, right? Again, this is why I try to tell you guys about these race hustlers, okay? The reason why they're so upset with white people is because white people don't love them as much as they believe that white people should love them, right? That, that is where their issue is, okay? They're so mad and upset because they're not being treated badly, okay? Let's keep it 100. Being black in America, you are the most privileged black person on the planet, right? I mean, you basically hit the lottery being black in America compared to in other places that you could be born, right? Other situations you could be in, okay? I'm just saying, it's a blessing to be black in America, okay? So we know that these people really aren't that hurt, right, by the circumstances, right, no, 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 what they're really hurt by, again, is the fact that white people are not giving them that hug that they feel like they deserve, that they want, right, this is what they really want, so they lash out at white people, okay, and they express anger and vitriol towards whites who do not love them the way that they want to be loved, that's what's going on here, I promise you, I promise you, Michael Eric Dyson is just one of many of these black liberals who uh, coming out here talking about how they're against white supremacy and racism and all this and that but yet secretly uh they either want white women they want to be with a white person right or they're just openly you know with a white person while complaining about white supremacy aoc cringe jean pierre kamala harris uh katanji brown jackson i mean do we got to go our list don lemon again a lot of these people, they love the great white pipe okay Especially these liberal black women, they love the great white pipe. Okay, can't, can't get enough of it. Obsessed with it. Okay. So, in my opinion, um, I think that Michael Eric Dyson, uh, he has a lot of questions to answer, right? About why would he slide in the DMs of a sitting GOP Congresswoman, uh, especially after calling her a racist. But that was not the core focus of this hearing. Okay, this hearing was really about. Uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's border disaster and there is some things that were exposed that are much more important to talk about than Michael Eric Dyson uh, trying to cheat on his wife uh, as we have ex-border chief Aaron Heidke exposing the cover-up that allegedly took place from the direction of the Biden-Harris administration when it comes to the border disaster okay we're talking about things like for example hiding data on terror encounters right terrorists coming to the country which the mainstream liberal media says is a right-wing conspiracy theory uh actually this is happening okay a lot more than we think and the government's numbers are being cooked in order to hide this from the american people and there were many more revelations as well too take a look the current administration however from day one made a point of decreasing the amount of detention space available nationwide. Immigration and Customs Enforcement's funding for detention has steadily been cut and private detention eliminated. The fact that so many illegal aliens are being released into the United States spread worldwide very quickly. As this happened, the numbers the Border Patrol encountered illegally crossing the border increased exponentially. The impact to me and my agents were significant. Sectors were ordered to take in and process all the illegal aliens encountered on the border. The Border Patrol saw groups of hundreds and thousands coming into the United States and turning themselves in. These numbers pulled 80, 90, sometimes 100 percent of the agents on duty away from the border. Border Patrol zones across Texas, Arizona, and California had no agent presence for weeks and months at a time. Those who did not want to be caught could simply walk in. We have no idea who and what entered our country over this time. Throughout 2022 and 23, I sent agents to Texas and Arizona to count gotaways. Those sectors could not even put enough agents in the field to see what they'd missed. Simultaneously, in San Diego, we had an exponential increase in significant interest aliens. These are aliens with significant ties to terrorism. Prior to this administration, the San Diego sector averaged 10 to 15 SIA arrests per year. Once word was out, the border was far easier to cross. San Diego went to over 100 SIAs in 2022. Well over that, in 2023, and even more than that, registered this year. These are only the ones we caught. At the time, I was told I could not release any information on this increase in SIAs or mention any of the arrests. 
The administration was trying to convince the public there was no threat at the border. Fentanyl is another issue. The San Diego area sees between 80 and 90 percent of the methamphetamine and fentanyl seizures annually for our entire country. With little enforcement at the border, these drugs were coming through in mass. During my last year in San Diego, the price for a single pill of fentanyl, for example, went from $10 to 25 cents. To make matters worse, during 2022 and 23, I had to shut down San Diego traffic checkpoints, which are critical for drug interdiction because the resources had been diverted to the process and release mission. The large numbers also had and still have a negative impact on the San Diego community. I had to release illegal aliens by the hundreds each day into communities who could not support them. To quiet the problem, two flights a week were provided from San Diego to Texas. These flights simply brought aliens that would have been released in San Diego over to Texas. Each flight cost approximately $150,000. This was the administration's way to try and quiet the border-wide crisis. Once these flights were stopped and the releases continued, California saw the true economic impact. I received calls from the governor's office, local mayors, and hospital administrators asking me if we could keep injured aliens in custody so the federal government would pay the medical bills. Through pressure from the administration, my headquarters became more interested in the fiction that being portrayed in the media and not at all concerned with reality. Each time we asked for help in dealing with a new issue, it fell on deaf ears. At times in San Diego, we had 2,000 or more aliens sitting in between the fences asking to turn themselves in. I was told to move them out of sight of the media. Meanwhile, Border Patrol agents are continually forgotten and neglected by the media and this administration. These agents deal with death, women and children that have been raped, abused, trafficked, bought and sold, families that have spent months in terrible conditions, sickness and despair. If you look at the dramatic rise in the number of suicides within the Border Patrol, it is directly correlated with the migrant surge. The agents have been pushed beyond their limit, and this has greatly impacted their physical and mental health. While current numbers of aliens crossing our border are lower in comparison in recent months, there's a reason for this. After nearly four years, this administration finally started to ask Mexico for help in slowing down the traffic through their country. This and other actions make a difference, but why has it taken so long? All of these tactics were being used before this administration took office, but this administration stopped or greatly limited them. I'm also concerned this will not be maintained. The problems we are facing at the border have solutions. These solutions can be quite simple and cost far less than the mess currently occupying so much time and money. The return to a policy of enforcing the law and returning illegal aliens to their home countries is required. Thank you. Yeah, so this is a plain as day explanation of the disastrous policies from the Biden-Harris administration, okay? What they wanted to do is they wanted illegals to come into the country. They were helping them come into the country, okay? So much so that they were using up resources from border control to help process illegal immigrants, right? Bring them in. We're not going to hold them in the detention centers. We're just going to let them run around the country and do whatever they want to do, right? And maybe one day they'll show up to a court date. But that is essentially... What is happening, right? It, it was so chaotic uh, that it pulled away uh, resources from actually stopping people from coming into the country. So as that is happening, you have terrorists entering the country and we have no clue how many of them actually have come into the country because you don't have enough border patrol agents to encounter them at the border in order for them to be counted as terrorists, right? Coming in, right? So basically what he's saying is that we know that the amount of terrorists trying to come into the country has increased because the encounters have increased, but resources are stretched so thin that a lot of them that tried to come into the country weren't encountered, right? So we really don't know how many have come into the country. And the Kamala Harris, Joe Biden administration tried to cover this up, right? And I mean, Kamala Harris is the border czar, so she is the main person responsible for this. And this is just another example of how the mainstream of media and the Democrats gaslight people on the issue of immigration. They keep claiming that, oh, we just need more resources. We need more money to solve the problem. What they actually really mean is that we need, we need more money to facilitate illegals coming into the country. That's what they want. And this is why any type of Democrat legislation on the border on this issue should not be trusted, okay? Because they, they simply want to allow as many illegals into the country as possible for various reasons because it helps them maintain power and control, okay? Uh, and also on top of that, it's good for business, right? And that is what the Democrat Party is doing and it is being done on purpose. They're covering it up and they're putting this country in danger in the process of 
Democrats trying to maintain their power and control. That's exactly what is happening, right? This type of stuff right here, in my opinion, is the type of stuff uh, that could warrant impeachment, right? I mean, we should be having impeachment proceedings against Kamala Harris as VP because of her negligence and the cover-up of the disaster that's happening at the border. I'm so serious. I'm so serious. Because it is a national security issue. This is a national security threat. You're basically allowing the country to be invaded by foreigners. This is what they're doing. So, you know, with that being said, um, you know, I'm hoping that the American people can see through the baloney that is coming from the Democrat Party and from Kamala Harris pretending like they're going to be tough on the border. They're not going to be tough on the border. Any legislation they pass cannot be trusted. It's only going to make the problem worse, right? They're just going to legalize illegal immigration. That's all they're going to do and then tell you it's fixed. Well, we, we just declared all the illegals legal, so it's fixed, right? It's fixed. And if you disagree with us, then you're a hateful bigot, right? And, you know, if they call you a hateful bigot, they probably want to sleep with you, right? There's a good chance they probably want to sleep with you as well, too. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We'll support, at least share a black conservative perspective. Peace.